What we're looking to do, we're just looking to put a ball pretty much in the centre of that, the, the clump at the top there. Yep. Um, hopefully leaving us with about 150 into the green um, and with a nice little 7 iron or 8 iron into the green. Okay. No worries, yeah, makes sense. My name's Jay Cookson, I'm a member of the English Blind Golf Association. Uh, I've been a member there since 1999. Uh, over the years playing in the Blind Golf Association, I've been fortunate enough to be a member of the England Blind Golf team since 2000, which is a wonderful thing to be involved in. Uh, just a good competition and good team spirit amongst that type of setting. It's good, straight, straight down. My name's Simon, I'm Jay's brother. I've been involved with the English Blind Golf Association since 2001. I've played golf for a lot longer. I, I actually played uh, uh, as a county junior and, and what have you. I was playing at 12 years old and had aspirations in those days to, to maybe one day play for a living, uh, which uh, didn't happen and, and stopped playing for a while once the eyesight problem started. But um, English Blind Golf got me back into, back into golf. Which, was, which has been great the whole, to be involved, as Jay said, with uh, things like the England team for you know, 10 straight years now. That's always a, a real honour to, to go and play for your country. I've been lucky enough to, to win the World Championship twice, in, in, once in 06 in Japan and um, then again in the UK in, in 2010. So I'm the, I'm the current uh, B3 World Champion, which is uh, quite a nice accolade to carry around with you. It's, um, Adds a little bit of kudos to what you do, I guess. Golf itself and, and to be involved and, and, and be able to compete and what have you is, is the, the reason that, uh, that we carry on doing it and, and why, why the whole blind golf thing exists, you know. It um, keeps us off the street, so to speak. Simon mentioned that he's world champion. He's the world champion gross B3 player, which is one of the, the, the three categories that are in, involved in blind golf, and it's B1, 2 and 3. As obviously Simon's in the B3 category being world champion, and I'm, I'm a B2. And the B1s are basically the totally blind guys who have no useful vision other than sort of light perception. They may see a shadow or something like that, but certainly nothing more than that. Simon's on the upper limits of how much you can see in order to be a part of blind golf. To sort of try and quantify that in some way, it's uh, kind of like being able to see just the top letter on an eye chart when you're sat in an optician's chair. For me in the B2 category, you'd have to have that chart considerably closer to be able to see that uh, top letter. And as I've already mentioned, the B1s are more or less totally blind and will have nothing much more than light perception. Perfect. Down. Both of us, uh, Simon and I, suffer from a condition called uh, retinitis pigmentosa, which, as you may be able to gather from the name, retinitis, so it's an inflammation of the retina, and pigmentosa means that there's a, basically a pigment that forms on the retina. Visual loss started for me when I was about uh, 23. I just started noticing some problems driving a car, of course. I mean, I, it's one of those times, you know, a lot of people, you often get asked, well, you know, how much can you see? What can you see? Well, uh, in actual fact, if I asked to describe everything that you can see, would um, would probably take you quite a long time if you started at one side of your field of vision and worked through it. So when you start to suffer from any, any sort of visual loss, particularly brought on by a condition like uh, we have, there's just a little bit. And of course, driving a car is one of the few times when you really are using your vision. And um, I just started no noticing that things were appearing very late, you know, I, I would be driving a car and all of a sudden a parked car would appear much closer to me than I should, you, you should obviously see it at, at a greater distance and, and it becomes some, somewhat hazardous of course and um, after one near miss that's when I was diagnosed.
My name's Mark Rose. I've been playing golf for about 25 years now. I joined me on Valley Golf Club about 12 and a half years ago and was fortunate enough to be uh, club captain in 2006. I've known Simon and Jay for about 10 years now. Again, since I've been a member at Meon Valley, um, we've played in a few competitions together. During my year at, uh, in 2006, Simon was fortunate enough to be England captain for the English Blind Golf Association and he approached me because they'd arranged a, an international against Scotland which they hold every year and asked me if I would like to be involved um, in being their referee for the, for, the, for the match. Once I got introduced to all the English players and the Scottish players that come down, it kind of hits you a little bit with regard to their family attitude whether they're playing against each other or not, but they just seem to be one big family of, of, of golfers that work as a team with their guides and everybody else that's evolved around them. And it just kind of strikes you and you, you, you're compelled to want to get involved in it. Afterwards, having spoken with Simon and his brother and a few of the others, I just wanted to get involved in blind golf. Being able-bodied um, and able to go and play golf whenever I feel like I want to go and play golf, it just become apparent to me that these guys don't have that same opportunity. We're about a nine iron. I like nine. Yeah? Yep. Nine sound good. They want people to be involved with them and I was only too happy to help. The following year, when the return fixture was due to Scotland, I got a phone call from Simon asking me if I still wanted to be involved with inblind golf and obviously yes I did as they had a new lad that had just joined the association um, a lad by the name of Rob Parrott he come down here we had a game of golf and we paired up and I was going to be Rob's guide we struck quite a good friendship early on as you tend to do with all the blind golfers we went to Scotland we had a unanimous victory up there me and Rob won our three games that we was involved in uh, and we won the trophy and it's evolved from there really. Rob managed to get enough qualifying points to be selected to represent England in the World Championships of this year but due to an unfortunate accident with a brain haemorrhage he was unable to attend. Simon who also qualified for the World Championships this year, his guide Stewie again through no fault of his own had an injury which made that he couldn't play in it. So Simon said, well, let's make the best of a bad bunch and get together and go and do the Worlds, of which we did. We was very, very fortunate in that we won Simon's B3 category as world champions. Now turn, now turn, look at that. Go on, go on, go on, go on! <laughs> Who's the daddy? <laughs> If it's not for these guys, we're not out on the golf course. We simply couldn't uh, could, couldn't complete a round of, a round of golf. So based on that, it becomes a team game. Yes, I have to. I'm the one who who swings the club and and sends the ball off where it's going to go. But of course, none of that happens without the help of someone like Mark, and that makes it very much a team game. And especially when you get down to the intricacies of. Uh, of what goes on in a round of golf for, for people or some of the things that make it such a very difficult game, whether you can see or whether you can't. From a guy's perspective, you, you've, uh, although, uh, as I say, I play golf and some guides don't, but in the main, you've still got to get in the same frame as mind of the golf as if you was playing golf yourself. The difference being is that I'm not swinging the club and I've got to try and get Simon to hit a golf ball as I would attempt to hit a golf ball. So it's, it's kind of taking my golf away from me, but using my knowledge and vision to make up for Simon's visual impairment. And hopefully as a team builds and you grow and you communicate with each other, you get to learn a little bit, you know, when, when you're playing golf yourself. 
but yeah, I'm, as, yeah, the team game without without any question. That's the that's the the emphasis certainly that, uh, and they often get forgotten, you know. And I, I think I think it's more of a shame that they that they get forgotten. They generally get thanks. There's, people are, are, are pretty quick to, to to thank the guides for their participation, but you know when I you know we're very lucky that we won a world world champion, but we're with you know the, the the team of of Simon Cookson and Mark Rose won won the 2010 World Championship, not Simon Cookson. You know it's because uh, without without this guy on the bag that week, uh, the result could have been very very different. If you can't see something, then you don't know. You can't see it. You don't know it's there. As far as you as far as you can tell, you can see everything. But you can only see everything that you can see. You know, there may be, you know, I'm looking out now, I can, I'm aware that there are trees and the sky and stuff like that, but there's no birds in my sky. For, for all the doors it closed, it, um, it opened some others. And as I say, things like involvement in blind golf bought, you know, notoriety that, that perhaps we wouldn't have received otherwise, you know, it's, um, so always, always been trying try to look at the positive side of things uh, you know as I say for for everything that's not possible you you generally find that there's um, let's say another door that opens and it's just uh, up to you to kind of step through them really blind golf is it is, is it now that's uh, you know I don't do anything else it's, it's my passion and my um, you know the, what a game of golf in general of course but um, yeah, just to keep working at it and not not accept that uh, as my eyesight gets worse, that I necessarily will become a worse, you know, a, a, a less good player, whatever the phrase is. But um, you know, so to keep working hard and, and, and improving, hopefully, it's as for me, it's the, it's the it's the greatest sport on earth, you know. And I, and I personally think the toughest. So uh, the fact that we do it to an okay standard, despite disability is um, and it frustrates the hell out of out of sighted people you know when you can go out and beat someone who sees normally and has been playing golf for a long time and you go out and and, and just simply shoot a better score than him um, you can you can see it kind of gets up their nose a little bit and I love that I absolutely love that that's, that's one of the best things I guess I'd, I'd be interested to know what it's like to see perfectly again. I've kind of forgotten what it was like to be able to see well enough to drive a car, but... Um, I can see in my dreams, can you? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think I can, actually. I dream yeah. with perfect vision. Kind of yeah. weird. <laughs> I must... Well, you, you, you have to... You know, if I, I can look at a car now and, and I, I can see it as a car, but I couldn't read the number plate to you. And I'll, I'll have, next time I'm dreaming about a car, I'll have to see if I can read the number plate in my dream. Thank you.